Some Stamets for you this afternoon, the fourth movement of his symphony in E-flat, Opus 11. That was the Northern Chamber Orchestra. Nicholas Ward was the conductor. It is 537 right now here in the Diamond Lane on Winnipeg's Classic 107. And as I've been talking about all afternoon, on Sunday marks the opening of a fantastic new exhibit from the Winnipeg Art Gallery called Olympus, the Greco-Roman Collections of Berlin. This is a massive exhibit, and I'm very happy happy to welcome Dr. Stephen Boris from the gallery here with me. Let me turn on your mic before I say hello. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. I always forget that little part. So, um, Stephen, tell me about this exhibit. Well, I like the words you're using, massive, monumental. (laughs) On many levels it is, and it's historic. It's 160 Greek and Roman antiquities, sculptures, bronzes, terracotta vases um, from the National Museums in Berlin coming to Winnipeg for one year. The last time we had a major show of antiquities was 50 years ago with wow. the treasures of King Tut. Wow. I can't, that was 50 years ago. 1964. Wow. So what did it involve to get this here to Winnipeg? On the most basic level, a 737 cargo jet dedicated to the entire shipment. Wow. That's one thing. Couple years of negotiations, diplomacy, politics, um, all the discussions, negotiations, to get some of the finest works from one of the most important collections in the world to North America for the first time. There are two venues in North America, Quebec City and the WAG. It's pretty special, particularly for Winnipeggers, to celebrate something that, that hasn't been around for a long time. So what, I know it's it's such a big exhibit, but what will people see in the exhibit? Give us some examples. It's what they'll see and hear and mm-hmm. feel and take in. Um, close to 11,000 square feet of exhibition space laid out in very different galleries that will give you the feeling of a Roman rotunda or a pantheon. There's a Roman gallery. There's a space, a forum for all the great um, marble sculptures of the gods, the deities. It is a transformative space, and at all points, there's a wonderful array of interesting didactics, fabulous audio tour, a booklet, a passport, and and text. But you know, most importantly, it's these objects that will lead the whole exploration. When you're putting together an exhibit like this, um, what do you think of in terms of how you're spreading it out for people to take in like you know what do we put first what do we follow you know how how much of that planning or or how do you plan for that this is these are great questions you know there's the design of the show how it looks the colors on the walls how you move through there's what kind of information you want to share how you light it but most importantly we want the visitor to to feel totally comfortable Um, to feel totally encompassed by the art. And I like to think about what I would want to see going in. You don't want too much information. You want them to focus on these amazing life-size sculptures of Aphrodite, Zeus. Um, You want them to focus on works that are thousands of years old here with us in Winnipeg for a limited time. A lot of people don't get to travel Um, to some of these great cities, whether it's in Greece or Italy or some of the great museums. And here in Winnipeg, Winnipeggers deserve the very best. And this time, it's classical antiquities. In this day and age, when, you know, we have our computers, we're able to look at all these things online, uh, especially with this kind of artwork, it's so famous, it's portrayed in so many different ways on films and documentaries. And when you see it in real life, what should we be looking for to be able to appreciate this in real life after maybe seeing some of these pieces on TV for forever? You know, it's a combination of what you should be looking for and how you might feel. So when you're standing face to face to a marble bust of Zeus, a bust that's from the second century BC, and you realize it probably was installed in a temple and he had a life And there you are. So when my son reads Percy Jackson or Harry Potter, Mm -hmm. and he looks at all these figures, these are the ones that were there. They personify the gods. The other thing is, some of them are in a remarkable state of conservation. And it 
to, to understand, okay, that piece is from the 5th century B.C., and it's with us in Winnipeg, and there's nothing between you and the bronze or the marble, and enjoy it. So you will learn a lot. You will also learn about how much of Greek and Roman civilizations impact on our lives today. Medicine, art, theater, the sports, the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So many different aspects, law, language, currencies. We don't realize it. Latin and the words we use, the places we go, those ancient civilizations are still very much alive. I wonder, Stephen, you know, with all the the last few exhibits that the gallery has had, I always think, you know, after 100 masters of this season alone, Dolly, now this, I, I, when I think you can't top it, you do. How do you do it? Well, this is exclusive information for the Diamond Line. <laughs> Diamond Line. <laughs> there's always something more to share. And there's always something more to present to our audiences. What I'm finding, the greatest enjoyment I get here is having a conversation with the community and learning what they want to see and do and what they want to enjoy. We can't satisfy everyone all the time, but over the course of a few years, I bet there will be a show for everyone. The great thing about Olympus is in grade three and in grade eight and in grade 12, students in Manitoba study ancient civilizations. So you can imagine, rather than opening the textbook or looking at a video or a map, go to the WAG and, and that's the best way to learn about a culture. Well, congratulations uh, on what I know is going to be another successful exhibit for uh, the Winnipeg Art Gallery, and I can't wait to see what you guys have in store for us after this. Thank you.